So this is a double photo here. I'd like to draw your attention right to this little piece of equipment right here. So walking out into the woods without a bow saw, or at the very least the blades and the knowledge on how to make a bow saw, can be a real handicap. With a bow saw like this, wood that's this size that you can see right here, this is probably a 12 to 16 inch log. That log suddenly becomes available to me for shelter or for fire. I can fell trees this big and this big if they're too hard to push over just because I have that one item in my pack or with me. So it makes a major difference when it comes to uh, winter fires, at least up here in the Boreal where uh, fire is everything to get you through the winter. So as we look at these three photographs here, we're just making a very crude and, and simple uh, shelter. So um, what do I have got there? There's your uh, pile of logs. You can see the size of logs that I was able to get because I had that saw. Uh, some of them will break depending on how rotten or punky they are. And right here is a bed, spruce bow bed. So there's a big log there underneath one side, a big log there, the center core is filled with snow and the boughs are piled on top. The idea here with this photo is that potentially you could build one giant fire right there that uh, comes re-emitting back off the wood and you could build another fire right there or just use it as a wall. Now sleeping between two fires like that, in my way of thinking, one fire is, is scary enough. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to sleep between two big fires. But... And the chance of not always being in the smoke of one or the other is it's just about nil. You know? Yeah, it's just yeah. about nil. So uh, the reason this photo is down here is to just illustrate the size of wood right there for that fire compared to what you would get if you were burning into the face of this. You know, it's quite, quite that considerable. Might, that might last half the night and you can make that pile again and sleep the rest of the night. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. All right, so we're taking the, this is another another view. We've got a shelter right here. This is kind of a small propped up lean-to. There's a log back there propping up the wall behind me, filled in the sides a little bit. So this is just a kind of a quick crude thing. I had the logs laying around. There's the bed. The fire would be built into the face of these logs right here. So we're looking at it from another angle, the same shelter. There's the bed, a little wall backed uh, thermal mass shelter so instead of piling the logs vertically I chose to pile them horizontally which was kind of nice I had nice straight logs and there weren't really much for gaps in between so that was a good way to do it and there's a shot of me laying in that shelter so this is uh, just a shot of that same shelter uh, my friend and I Hart went out to do some testing and he's about to start the fire right inside there and the next picture you can see the fire has started into this and our plan is to burn through this pile of logs right here and see how long it lasts how many hours or minutes that it lasts without having to add more wood to it so our test results this pile of wood right there now you see the size of that wood test results this pile of wood burned for almost three hours with few adjustments at minus 18 celsius fahrenheit that would be Oh, good question. Huh. Yeah, probably minus, uh, minus, or zero, zero, yeah, zero or minus ten. Yeah. yeah. 
So the logs were cut to body length, so as long as I am tall. And the logs on the back side here had snow mixed in and wet wood to lengthen the burn time. So when we first lit that fire, we found the logs were so dry it was burning faster than we wanted. So we actually threw snow on the back to slow it down a bit. And we got three hours out of it with very few adjustments. You know, we might have had to push here and push there, but we never had to add wood. Uh, the next day, we were out there because those these big fires, they tend to burn into the ground and, and they can start ground fires. So we just dug that up. We wanted to be sure. Uh, so we went out there and dug into the ground. And this is just illustrating that you should be able to bury your fingers right into the whole fire area without feeling any warm spots whatsoever. So you keep mixing and sifting in the snow until it's completely out. Here's a quickie shelter, fallen log, cattails, uh, bark and other pieces of wood. The bark actually came right off of this log right like that. So a quick shelter in a, in a hurry, in a rainstorm, or you know, you just gotta hunker down for a few hours. It's not gonna be warm, because it's not really conducive to lighting a fire, but you can crawl into this and be somewhat protected from maybe a short storm, a short rainstorm. And here's another view of it. Yeah, you can see the nice, gorgeous, large shards of bark off the uh, balsam pond. Yeah. What a, what a resource. Yeah. Big shingles, yeah, yeah. And that's just the dog, Buddy the dog, standing on top of it. And then here in these next photos, this is inside it. So really simple. This, this shelter, I bet you I maybe spent 15 to 20 minutes on it. Probably 10 minutes because all the bark was right there and all the pieces of wood from that fallen tree. So it gave me the whole shelter. The only thing I had to do was walk to the lake shore and get a bed. And there I am laying in there taking a shot. So really nice. All right, let's look at a bush bed. Kelly, you slept on a lot of these, hey? Now, it's just what I had was, was very large logs, so you don't have to use logs this big. These are quite thick logs for the bed, but in any case, one, two, three logs laid down first, and then another log laid across the length of your body, and then another one after that, and then these are green saplings. These look like, to me, Saskatoon. Uh, probably more than I needed in there. There looks to be 10 or 12 in there. And that gives you a bit of a springiness to your mattress, which is quite nice. And then boughs placed on top. Spruce boughs, uh, pine boughs, fir boughs. Uh, if you had to, just if you didn't have coniferous ones and you had to put deciduous ones, then you could totally do it as fine. well. Yeah. Yep, just go for it. Take yeah. careful note of the spacing of the logs in, in the lower picture. Right here. Two of them are wider apart to help fit your shoulders and hips. Between. Shoulders and hips. You're right, yeah. And then under the lakes. Yeah.